my loves, and welcome to the Fluff and Hammer adjacent. Now, unless you've been living under a rock in a cave on Mars somewhere in an alternate dimension, then you can't have helped but notice that the uh, we've got a couple of new codices on the way. We've got the Orcs Codex, uh, which we've heard precious little about because it's been eclipsed by the uh, Adeptus Custodes Codex. I mean, the Custodes are really interesting. Because they're one of they're technically one of the newer armies for 40k. Um, they didn't have like a presence in 40k up until when was the first Adeptus Custodes book? Was it seventh ed? I think it was seventh ed. That was when they returned to the 40k universe as an organized force. Because up until then, they were just the Emperor's bodyguards. You know, they were sequestered in in the throne room around the Golden Throne. They protected the the courts of the Emperor from invasion and from you know getting even even more damage than he currently is which is technically impossible because there's hardly anything left of him but now they are actually a force that can get out there and fight things and they're like a they're like an interesting throwback to the prehistory of the 40k universe um and of course, one of the things that's come up uh, is that there are now female custodies, which is, it, that's awesome. For one thing, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense for there to be female custodies. Um, by this point, it's been 10,000 years plus since the the Great Crusade. And even before then, there are proto versions of the Space Marines. It didn't take the Emperor that long to create the Space Marines or the Primarchs. So, even though you have this weird sort of theocratic um, religious constraint on technological advancement, we should have had female Astartes by now. You can't tell me that someone like Belisarius Call or even Fabius Bile hasn't attempted this or tried to create like a female equivalent of them. So the notion of, I mean, and there's never been any such restrictions on the custodies ever. So there's no reason why not. I mean, for one thing, there never were custodies up to a particular point. There was only artwork and vague references to the Emperor's bodyguards. The Adeptus Custodes were kind of halfway mentioned in some very vague bits of lore, but they were never, ever, ever defined in terms of what they are. That didn't really happen until the Horus Heresy books. Uh, actually, there's a lot that didn't happen until the Horus Heresy books. Um you know, not to get too negative about it, but of course, obviously, because there are female custodies now, you are going the the, the usual uh, very vocal minorities are throwing all their toys out of the pram and having their entitled temper tantrums, as they always do, as they always do. For the most part, the the reception has either been positive or it has been it doesn't affect me, so I don't care. Um, or it's been adult, you know, it's been a case of, oh, they have changed this fictional universe, they've introduced something new into this fictional universe, which has no parameters anyway, and is constantly changing, and always has since its inception, as fictional universes do. But you have had the usual sort of, you've had the two types, you've had the, those, the Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro types, you know, those insincere fucking grifters on YouTube and on social media who they have realized that there is a certain there are certain subcultures from which they can make money basically from which they can gain traction uh there's those insincere assholes talking about oh, oh the oh our universe the universe they don't really give a shit about has changed and is oh woke oh oh no ah, because women have been acknowledged or it's it's so incidental that's the most fun thing right the change is so incidental so there are female custodies now. So what? So what? Is it going to change anything? No, not really. Not really. Maybe they, it opens the door for some interesting conversions and models now. Maybe it, it's a little bit more inclusive. So, you know, uh, so, you know women players will, will be able to access the custodies a little easier. So, yeah, it, all it does is open it up. That's all it does. It's an incidental change. It doesn't change the law because very little has been established about the custodies at this point. Um, 
And even if it were a change, it wouldn't matter because the law is constantly changing. Do you want something off the top? How how many thing how many things can I list off the top of my head that have changed? Okay, since Rogue Trader, uh, Space Marines. Space Marines used to be just normal people in power armor. They never used to be uh, genetically enhanced. They're just normal people in power armor. So that's a big change. No Primarchs back in Rogue Trader. Right up until uh, around the Lost and the Damned was published in the late 1980s. No Primarchs. Primarchs were not a thing. They were not a concept. Um, they did not... That What you had were generals. Uh, no legions. There were no Space Marine legions. They were all chapters back then. Uh, the final confrontation between the Emperor and Horus during the Horus Heresy didn't occur on the Vengeful Spirit. The Vengeful Spirit wasn't even a thing back then. That didn't come in until much later on, until William King actually wrote that story in The Lost and the Damned. Um, it took place in a command bunker on Earth, on Terra. Uh, Horus was just a human general back then. Uh, the Emperor's children. Mm, the Emperor's children have probably had the biggest change, the most significant change to their history than any Space Marine Legion ever, arguably. Uh, originally, and right up until the publication of the original Horus Rising novel in the Horus Heresy series, the Emperor's children were one of the legions that were sent to deal with Horus at Istvan, alongside the likes of the uh, Raven Guard and the Salamanders and the Iron Hands, they were originally corrupted in a parlay during that conflict. Obviously, with the publication of Horus Rising, that completely changed. They became one of the original legions that fell long before Istvan ever occurred. Also, Fulgrim's Possession, that wasn't a thing in the original fluff. Uh, that was originally Horus's background. Horus was possessed by a demon originally, uh, to the point whereby in the original Black Legion background, much of the Black Legion attempted to emulate him. So they had a lot more possessed than other Space Marine Legion, uh, Chaos Space Marine Legions. Oh man, there's so many. The Sisters of Battle. The Sisters of Battle were not a thing until the end of Second Dead. Tyranids were separate from Gene Stealers. Uh, the introduction of the Primaris. Necrons. Necrons didn't exist until late Second Ed. They were not a concept. Tau didn't exist until the middle of Third Ed. The Dark Eldar did not exist until the beginning of Third Edition. There were piratical Eldar, but there were not Dark Eldar. And the Dark Eldar themselves, when they were updated in the middle of Fourth Ed, were changed completely. Their background, their imagery, their ethos was completely rewritten by Phil Kelly to what it is now, where they were more like sort of Cenobites in space. Back at the beginning of Third Ed, they were a little bit shit, to be honest. They were just pointy Eldar, and they weren't very good. Um, what else has changed? Oh, it, it's a fictional universe, so stuff is changing all the time. The Necrons, when the Necrons were originally established, the Catan were in control of them. The Catan were the domineering, motivating forces for Necrons right up until the middle of, was it 4th or 5th Ed? I think it was 5th Ed, actually, when they had their big rewrite, when it was rewritten to give the Necrons more agency. So it was flipped on its head. They became the the rulers of the Catan, effectively. They became the enslavers of the Catan instead of it being the other way around. And it worked. It really, really worked well. Oh, what else? There's so much, because it's a, it's a fictional universe. No craft worlds to begin with. No Eldar craft worlds to begin with. They were all pirates. They were all piratical raiders. Um, the orc's physiology has changed quite significantly over time as it's adapted. Um, so, so much is different. The, the, the world eaters, the world eaters, the butcher's nails. Early on, the, the butcher's nails were not a thing, and nor were corn berserkers. Corn berserkers didn't come in until sort of in between realms of chaos, um, slaves to darkness, and the lost and the damned. Neither were noise marines. Noise marines were not a thing either. They were both introduced after the release of slaves to darkness in White Dwarf. Uh, so, yeah, imagine that. There was a period when you had World Eaters and Empress Children armies that had no Noise Marines and no Corn Berserkers. I mean, right? So weird, right? Uh, Thousand Sons. In the original fluff for Thousand Sons, there's no notion of the rubrique. There's no rubric of Araman. There's no Araman. The original Thousand Sons are just hyper-mutated Zeech Marines. That wouldn't come in until Second Ed. 
when the the entire ethos of the of the Chaos Space Marine legions was rewritten to give the individual legions more character and more motivation and more ideology, you know? Abaddon the Despoiler. Abaddon the Despoiler didn't exist until Second Ed. And his fluff has been dramatically rewritten and rejigged as time has gone on. In the original fluff, he was the, the, the classic almost like 13 times failure. He'd launched 13 Black Crusades, all of which had failed quite catastrophically, let's be honest. That was rewritten, obviously, towards it was 6th, 7th Ed when they rewrote that so that they were not failures he was just he was just like it's it, he had other motivations and what seemed to be failures were not you know it just gives him it makes him more of a threat obviously it makes him more of a threat loads of stuff has changed over time because it's a fictional universe and in fictional universes things can change whenever the writers feel like they want to that's the truth of the matter one of the things that always get I'm a writer. I'm a writer, right? I create fictional universes all the time. And one of the things that always gets me about these fan bases, these particular elements of fan bases who seem to think they own the material, that somehow their preconception of what the uni the fictional universes should be, um, they feel like that it should cater to them exclusively. That's the most amazing thing. And these are the same people, by the way, who will go on and on and on and on about that, that awful euphemism, woke, which doesn't actually mean anything. It's just a euphemism for their particular brand of conservatism and racism and bigotry and misogyny and whatever else. It's just code. It's ridiculous code. It was What was it before? You had political correctness. Then you had um, critical race theory. They always use a euphemism because they can't just say that they hate women, they hate anyone who isn't white, and they hate queer people, and they don't want them in their sandpit because it makes them seem like what they are, entitled fucking children. These are children who just don't understand that they don't own the fictional universes they grew up with. They don't. It's pathetic. It is truly, from the outside watching them, it's pathetic. Uh, because it's very clear in this particular instance, the, the, this vocal minority just don't like women. They just don't like women. They regard women as aliens, as invaders, as objects. And they resent women. They resent the presence of women. Um, it's truly pathetic. Coming from a gay guy, by the way, like myself, you know why women like gay guys so much? Because we don't see them as objects. We don't see them as invaders or as aliens or as these unobtainable things. We see them as people, you know? That's why women like gay guys, because we're not like you lot. Because we don't resent them for not basically Give, being these simplified anime harem stereotypes that you want them to be. It's truly, truly pathetic. Um, and it's no wonder no woman wants to go anywhere near you, quite frankly. Why would they? Um, but in this instance specifically, there's nothing to complain about. It is, it is, you, you see the tactics here. The, the insincere grifters, your Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro alikes, who will basically throw, you'll see the videos come up where it's like, whoa, oh, something, oh, this franchise has been, has failed, has been infiltrated by the woke agenda. <laughs> they are making money. They are, or they're garnering influence because they're cynical grifters. They don't believe a word. They don't give a shit about about any particular franchise or background or mythology they don't give two shits they are sin they are insincere and then you've got the, the the others the ones the ones i was talking about earlier who just don't like women or queers or people who aren't white or whatever and they're the ones who they're taking advantage of they're the ones who they're stirring up and like you know and you know the funny thing those who react who are reacting against this if they sat back for one second and they thought about it for one second they'd realize that there's nothing there there's nothing to complain about it's a storm in a teacup you know doesn't change anything doesn't change a damn thing about the universe also they will they will try to mask it they will try to mask their misogyny that's what i love they will try to say that they care about the background or the law but as i've already demonstrated the background and the law changes all the fucking time not only that but look at the central satire that's at the heart of warhammer 40,000. look at the dystopia that it paints where humanity is just a resource 
Do you honestly think the Imperium of Man gives two shits about incidentals like sex, gender, race, whatever? It doesn't care because humanity is a resource to be used. Do you honestly think someone somewhere in that last 10,000 years hasn't thought... We, are, we've, we have got a resource of human beings here, half of humanity, roughly, that we aren't using, that we could create into custodies or space marines or whatever, and we could use them. Because that's the rational way. That Within universe, that's the rational way of looking at it. That's the rational way of looking at it. That's what the Imperium itself would be thinking. They're a resource to be used. The fact that, oh, they don't have these bits and they have these bits would be, is ridiculous. It's so Picayune, given the, the galactic scale of the Imperium, given the way that it already uses human beings anyway, and the way it regards humanity, it's absurd to think otherwise. It's absurd to think otherwise. And the fact that it's, in, it's incrementally changing to reflect that is good. It's more in keeping with the central satire and ethos of the universe for that to be the case. Like I said, 10,000 years, there is no reason whatsoever why we shouldn't have female Astartes now, or female Astartes equivalents. Absolutely no reason whatsoever. During that 10,000 years, are you, are you telling me Belisarius Call hasn't sat there and thought about how to do it? hasn't probably figured out how to do it Al alongside the likes of Fabius Bile. The homunculi could almost certainly do it because look at the homunculi, the Drakari homunculi. Do you honestly think they have any notion <laughs> of what gender and sex even is? And if they do, it, it's they probably have they've invented new spectrums of 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 sex and anatomy and anatomical configuration. You know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to get het up about something so incidental. But then again, these are the same people who think that. Star Wars has to be a particular way, or that Star Trek has to be a particular way, or whatever franchise they engage with has to be a particular way. They think that it has to cater to them exclusively, because to their identities exclusively, because their identities are so fucking fragile. These are the same people who, whenever franchise includes or acknowledges the existence of queer people, anyone who isn't white, or women, they will throw shrieking temper tantrums about identity politics. And yet, they, they, they fundamentally miss the irony, the self-satire, that their identities are the most demanding, the most fragile, the most expansive and egregious in existence. They, they want everything everything in existence to cater to their identities exclusively. That's what they want. They can't say it that way because they wouldn't even acknowledge it that way. They're too stupid. They're too thick to understand that. They are too lacking in insight to understand that. The inclusion can, here's the rational, here's the rational argument. Here's, here's the argument. Can and any one of you who thinks that this is like in any way like a, a bad move or he's going to in any way undermine the universe can you demonstrate how can you give me a rational argument as to how how it stops people playing their all male custodies if they want to how it in any way affects the dynamic of the army or its position within the background how it in any way affects the status of the overall universe the politics the metaphysics it doesn't it doesn't you are just entitled children that's the truth of the matter. You haven't grown up. You have. You are still fourteen years old. He man, woman haters club. You are still ooh icky girls. It's pathetic. It's truly pathetic. On the other hand, it's really cool to see changes happening, subtle changes within the background and within the status of these armies to make them more interesting, to make them more inclusive. I mean. I, my only fear is that they don't do a very good job of introducing them. I hope it's some really interesting background. I want there to be something specific in the book about this, like what the female custodies are like. I mean, here's another thing. If the custodies are anything like the space marines, their sex doesn't matter anyway, because space marines are eunuchs. Space marines don't have, they're, they're nominally male coded, but they're eunuchs. They don't have a sex because why would they 
apart from the Emperor's children, and that's because of the blessings of Slanesh. Oh, by the way, the Emperor's children are a great example of how the notion of space marines, who are not only male and female, but can be both, can be intersex, can be androgynous or hermaphroditic, can be like completely fluid in terms of their gender representation, their sex. The Emperor's children have been doing that since their introduction way back way back in the ROC days so yeah sorry and all that also I mean did you know here's another thing the Eldari craft worlds and their aspect shrines right you've got the aspect shrines that are nominally mythologically male or female coded yeah so you've got the uh the swooping hawks are nominally male coded the howling banshees are nominally female coded However, the background of the Eldari goes into great detail about how when an aspect warrior dons that aspect, they become a different person. And it doesn't matter. There are male non there are male Eldari who become female coded when they don the aspect of the Banshee just as there are female Eldari who become nominally male-coded when they don the aspect of, say, the Striking Scorpion or the Dire Avenger. That's fucking cool, isn't it? Isn't it? That's really fucking cool. The witches. The witches in uh, the witch cults in um, in Komara. Again, that's a matriarchal society, interestingly, but there are male witches. There are male witches, you know? It's it, in this expansive universe with where there are monsters, where there are true demons, when there are actual manifestations of metaphysical evil. Your concern is about ah, oh, there are custodies that are maybe going to have like different head options at best. That's your concern. That's that's what you focus on. And as we've already established, that has changed so, so, so much anyway, and will continue to change because it's a fictional universe. Guys, you need to step back. You need to step back. You need to get a life. That's the truth of the matter. That's the truth of the matter. And, you know, I, it's me telling you this, the geekiest geek who ever geeked, right? You need to get a life. You need to you need to meet some actual women for one. You need to talk to some actual women as people and not as potential invaders or as objects for you to own or whatever. And you need to get out of you need to get something else to identify with. If this this is what throws you off the edge, this is what really <laughs> upsets you. And also stop watching those fucking grifters on YouTube who they don't give two shits. They are so insincere. It's all about clickbait. It's all about wanting your time and your attention and your money. They're fucking narcissists, these people. They don't care about you. They don't represent you. They don't give a shit about the universe that you care about. All they care about is their platform and their influence. That's all it is. They And they will seize upon anything. They don't even care about this issue in the way they pretend to. And you need to stop listening to the way they say things and start listening to what they say. Because when you start doing that, you'll realize that it's empty. There's nothing there. There's absolutely nothing there other than coded language designed to manipulate you. That's the truth of the matter. That's what upsets me most about all of this. You're being manipulated always. You're being led by the nose by something that you haven't sat down and thought about at all. You've given no thought to whatsoever. Why am I reacting this way? Why am I angry about something that does not matter, that is so incidental, and that occurs within a fictional science fiction universe about little toy soldiers? Why am I so upset by this? And when you start doing that, that is a really interesting path to growth, my loves. It really will be. Because you'll start to realize a lot of what makes you angry is, and it just doesn't matter. And also, it's not about that thing. That's the other thing. There's a whole heap of very troubling sort of neurosis, patriarchy, misogyny, historically enshrined misogyny boiling underneath this that makes the issue rather complex. Um, and the fact that you want to exclude women from this universe, which is 
doesn't give a shit about sex or gender in and of itself. I mean, it's the most amazing thing. The most amazing thing. How do you cope reading the Horace Heresy novels? You know, how do you cope? Or any of the novels? Because I tell you what, one of the weird things about the theocratic fascist regime of the Imperium of Man, from it's from the earliest instance to the present day, it's in many ways more enlightened and progressive than you lot are. Because it doesn't care. It doesn't care about queer people. It doesn't care about about like trans people. It doesn't care about uh, like color, creed, or anything like that. There's only humanity in all of its various forms because they don't care. That's why if you bother to go and read much of the Black Library fiction, oh, there are incidentally gay relationships in the forty first millennium. Just incidentally, and nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit because. It's it, at that point. It's Picayune. It's Picayune. Nobody cares. You know. It's it. It is not looked down upon. It's not even regarded as aberrant. It just is. It's just another form of human relationship. Um, in fact, that would be a fa fascinating focus for some fiction. I'm telling you. Um, maybe a world within the Imperium, where which is not as enlightened, which is like you lot, um, which is not as enlightened. Um, where you have an imperial envoy or something coming and find and finding it really weird that they have a problem with same sex relationships or whatever that would be so interesting that would be such an interesting thing to explore space marines even why the f would space marines care why the fuck would space marines care about that i mean for one thing they i mean they it is a they are sort of such a manly man 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 culture it can't help but come off as queer coded Take it from a gay guy. There is nothing, nothing gayer than men who insist on their own masculinity. It's it is a case of the lady doth protesting too much. I'm afraid there is nothing as transparently closeted and gay and in denial as men who insist on their own masculinity. And space marine cultures, yeah, it's it's like. It, they're like giant bathhouses, I'm telling you. It's ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. Anywho, that's the last I'm going to say about it. Until we talk about the Custodes book itself, which Adam and I will do eventually. We'll, we'll sit down and talk about the Adeptus Custodes book. Um, but for my money, I think it's great. I think it's really interesting, and I hope they do something with it. What I hope is it's not, it's not just like underbaked. I want it to be something. I want it to actually be significant, you know? um that would be really fun that would be really really fun uh but until next time my loves Come <laughs> on.